Uh, we'll get the opening statement from the coach and then we'll take questions after. Yeah, we've got four games left here in the regular season. They're all big. You know, we're one game up on AM and it's a one game lead, so the regular season championships and in our hands, we're in full control of it. If we take care of business on the road at uh, South Carolina, then we get two home games in the road game at a to close it. So, you know, we've stressed the importance of coming ready to play. I think South Carolina's been trending the right direction. They've got good momentum going. They're playing their best basketball now. You know, they've got a brand new coach, Lamont Paris, who I've known. He was an assistant in Wisconsin. And, done a good job, you know, when you get a new coach, sometimes it takes a little while to get your system in. So they're, they're playing better now, they've got good shooting. You know, they're one of the better shooting teams in our league. Uh, we do have to guard the three-point line uh, well, and then they, they get to the offensive boards uh, well too, so we're gonna do a good job on the defensive class. But to be, uh, we only got two true road games left, this one the A&M one, so we, uh, we need to come out and play well on the road. We had, you know, we've seen to play a little bit better at home here lately, so we need to get back to where we can play well on the road. We're going to need both these uh, wins on the road. Charlie? You mentioned their shooting, but Gigi Jackson's obviously one of the best freshmen in the league. Just what stands out about his game and how big of a problem is he for guys like Brandon and Noah? Yeah, I mean, Gigi was... <laughs> Gigi was obviously committed to Carolina. You know, he's super talented, decided to come out early. They didn't, I think they didn't have any scholarships left there or whatever we heard. So, he, you know, he stayed in his home state in South Carolina. He was a great kid for Lamont his first uh, year as head coach. I mean, he's super talented. I think Brandon's number one in the country as far as freshmen go for scoring. I think Gigi's sixth. You know, he shoots it well. He's got great mid-range game, gets to the rim, can handle it. He plays a lot more like a guard. Similar to Brandon, you know, they're both big wings that kind of play like guards. So, you know, he's projected first round pick. Um, I, I, he's good. I mean, he's really good. We're, we're, uh, we're going to have to, we're going to have different, different guys guarding him, different uh, looks on him, but they, they've, you know, they did, did well in getting him. Uh, to come there, and he's he's had a really good freshman year for him. Nick, sorry. Uh, you guys are number three right now in defensive efficiency, and which is the same number you guys finished two years ago. Uh, what similarities or differences do you see between this defense and that defense? Yeah, so we you know we stressed this year getting the three. I think we finished ninety second in Ken Palm's efficiency last year, which, you know, big reason why we had some of the upsets that we gave and some of the bad losses we had, you know, when, when your offense is struggling, you need your defense to carry you, and I think we've had that this year. Uh, the similarities are the guys are taking it seriously and understand they have to guard, and we had pretty good depth both years, so if somebody's not guarding, he's just not going to play this year, just like it was two years ago, or we didn't have that depth last year. Yep. The other similarities we got length, kind of positional size this year, and we <clears throat> didn't have it as much last year. You know, look at two years ago, Primo and Petty are kind of your two guards, two or three. Herb Jones played a lot of four for us, but he's six, eight, and long. You know, we, we could put Reese and Bruner together and put Herb at the three. I mean, Herb essentially was our starting point guard with, you know, Petty. Primo, Keon Ellis, all those are big guards. You know, we last year we were a lot smaller. This year we're, we're a lot bigger. I mean, you look at our starting group, our front court, six nine, six ten, seven foot. You know, we've got great rim protection, so, which is a little bit of the difference. You know, two years ago I thought we had an elite level perimeter defender in Herb Jones. They could kind of put him on anybody. This year I think we've got an elite level rim protector with Betty Ako where, you know, scheme-wise, we're trying to send a lot of stuff down. Charles, who does a great job protecting the rim, and we, we maybe don't have a Herb Jones, but we've got pretty good overall defenders that take take it seriously, and we've got an elite level rim protector that we can kind of game plan around and send guys down over the rim. But regardless of how we're getting it done, we're, we're getting it done you know, like you said, top three in the country two years ago when we won the SEC, we're top three in the country in defense. 
efficiency right now, we got we to keep it there. Mike? It was discussed in court this morning that Brandon's car was involved with Darius' situation. Just how comfortable were you with his, his proximity to that and also present any NBA scouts you might be inquiring? What would you say to them about that? Yeah, I mean, we've known the situation since it's been, we've been fully cooperating with law enforcement the entire time. I mean, it's the whole situation's sad. I mean, you just think of it, we team close practice with a prayer for the situation today. Again, knowing that we had this trial today, I mean, you think of Jamia and the family and Kane, really think about it. Or some Kane that was left behind. So it's sad, we did, we knew about that, I mean, you know, can't control everything anybody does outside of practice. Nobody knew that was going to happen. College kids are out. Brandon hasn't been in any type of trouble, nor has he any trouble, type of trouble on this case. It's like in the wrong spot at the wrong time. So we'll, we'll address it when uh, I'm sure NBA scouts will ask. They do their homework. But yeah, I'm going to think the article that it came out and also stated Brandon's been interviewed. He's, you know, they're comfortable with everything that, that happened there. Katie. You talked about GP Jacks, not South Carolina, but you have two South Carolina guys of your own in Clowney and uh, Nick Pringle. Just how excited are they to kind of go home? And then what did you see out of high school with Clowney and the state of South Carolina that he would be such a good fit for your system? Yeah, we kind of got a homecoming for the two of those, with Pringle and Clowney. Uh, Clowney played against GG in high school. You know, we. Shoot, you saw a county play in some AAU stuff in Atlanta. I mean, we saw the athleticism, the versatility, the fact he could step out, make threes, perfect big for our system. You know, it can kind of play one through five, not one through five, but can play four and five, my fault. You know, can kind of play them both, strip, step out, make threes. You know, and his athleticism, we thought, really help us on the defensive end, which it has. So with Pringle, we saw a lot of athleticism, kind of a guy that can also be a rim protector. You know, he's still figuring out the defensive system and all that. He's not quite as good as Charles at protecting the rim, but, he, you know, he's really athletic. He could possibly turn into a switch guy as he gets better and better. But with both of them, their length, athleticism, you know, how we want to play fast, they fit in, you know, with bigs that can get up and down the floor well. So. Hopefully they go back and play well. You know, we've, remember we had Juwan Gary from South Carolina. We went back, I think that was two years ago. We went back there and I think he started that game and got hurt right away. Yeah, hopefully these two are able to play the full 40 here this, uh, this time. Chris. Home court advantage, it's obviously huge. Um, We've been better at home. You know, I don't know what the I don't know what the numbers are overall with everybody. But you think about the you know best way to compare it is look at the teams you played twice. Vandy, a lot bigger win at home than on the road. LSU, a lot bigger win at home than on the road. You know, multiple teams. It just seems like we played better. I don't have a great answer because there's always a little bit of home court advantage. It seems. You know, I don't know. I know two years ago when you couldn't really have anybody in the stands or not very many people at all, it seemed like you know, maybe there wasn't as big a home court advantage because the crowds weren't as big and it just seemed everywhere was empty gyms. It was an odd, odd deal with the COVID year. I don't know if we're getting back to where we've got sellouts about every game. You know, I don't know if that's the case. You know, Obviously, having a sold out crowd is better than having 20% or 15%, whatever it was during COVID. So I, you know, I don't know if that's part of it. I don't really have an answer for it. I, I, I talked to our guys about playing well on the road today before practice. Like we need to start playing. We need to have more consistency where we're playing a lot better on the road. Uh, you know, we're not going to be playing in Coleman for the SEC tournament, the NCAA tournament. We got it now. They won't be true road games, but they won't be home games either. So we, we've got to play a little bit better when we're not inside Coleman. So that kind of was my challenge to the team this morning. We'll see how. Well, we can play on the road in South Carolina because we're going to need to it may come down to that last game with AM. You know, we're going to play well on the road there. They're only game behind us. And 
This is our only other game before the end of the game on the road. Mason. You only had to play Charles Betty for 14 minutes in the game against Georgia. Coming down the stretch, you ain't ready for the SEC and NCAA tournament. How <coughs> advantageous is it when you can kind of rest players, not, not actually rest them, but give them less minutes, whether they're dealing with negative injuries, or to just play heavy minutes all year? Yeah, I mean, with Charles, it obviously was a deal where he was hurt. You know, he decided to come back and give it a go against Tennessee. Wasn't anywhere close to where he needed to be, but we still tried to use him because kind of angers our defense. So against Georgia, you know, he's a little bit better than he was against Tennessee. So it was nice that we didn't have to play him. What, what did he play, 14 minutes? So he said, yeah. So, you know, Jaden Bradley, I think only played 14. He had the ideal going a little bit. You know, some of those guys that had an injury or whatever, you can just make sure that they're getting rest it's good. I mean, this isn't a deal where we're planning to do some type of load management for like an NBA deal. I guess we're playing two games a week, not you know back-to-back -back nights or anything. So we're we're planning on playing everybody as much as we need to in each game. But yeah, if you get a game where you're shooting it as well as we did against Georgia and you've got a big lead and you can rest a guy that's recovering from an injury like Charles was, you know, we're going to take advantage of that situation. Yeah, you mentioned Texas a Has there been any really added emphasis on, you know, the importance of winning these next three games before you go to College Station? Yeah, we're going to take them one at a time. I mean, we know, like, kind of talked about where it may come down to where we got to win a road game to win the SEC. You know, so we've only got one more chance. It's more a, we got to play better away from Coleman because we're going to have a possibility of playing nine games away from Coleman after the regular season's uh, done. So, but I know we, no, we were taking them one at a time. I think when you start to look at Arkansas, Auburn, a and all of a sudden you screw up the South Carolina one in front of you. So we haven't talked about Arkansas, Auburn, or a and at all. We just, what do we got to do to win South Carolina? I think you take them one at a time, you win this one, then you look, take, you know, look at Arkansas, you just keep taking them one at a time. So that's the only way to do it. You know, we've got a great situation in front of us for, I think most teams would love to be in full control of their own destiny with four games left in the regular season we are right now. These blowout wins have allowed kind of some guys to get more reps, maybe Dom, Nick in recent games. Is this team kind of set where it's at or can it still evolve? If those, you, know, you look at a guy like Dom, maybe he gets a shot back. Do you think this team can still evolve or do you kind of know where you're at? No, I think it can evolve. I actually made this, I was kind of joking with somebody in practice yesterday. We made a trade deadline acquisition. Went out and got ourselves a shooter because Don was back to where he wasn't missing any shots in practice yesterday. So I kind of just made the joke that we were able to make an acquisition right at the trade deadline and went out and got ourselves a veteran shooter for the stretch run. So I think guys can step up. You know, it'd be great if we could get down making shots like he has been in practice in the games. You know, we're going to give him a shot to do that. We, uh, if we, you know, I mean, you look back at two years ago, Quinterly was up and down a little bit two years ago, and he got himself going for the stretch run the SEC tournament. So that, that team was still evolving. You know, if you remember, Jordan Bruner got hurt and had to sit out a month or so, and we had to bring him back. Like, Reese stepped up big and was able to play better when Bruner was out and kind of got so. I think, I think you're still evolving. I think some of the freshmen are getting better and better. You know, you see, I think Jaden and Ryan Griffin, two particular ones that have continued to improve as the year went on. But, you know, Namari still coming back from the injury, getting back in full swing of things. I think Pringle's playing a lot better for us now than he was. You know, I think some guys are improving, and we're going to try to get everybody playing their best basketball as we come down the stretch. You good? Thanks, right. Thanks. 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 Thanks.